ready to go. All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. This is uh, an overview of the Every Student Succeeds Act, or ESSA. Uh, that's the plan that um, account or is the state accountability tool for schools. Uh, so we're gonna talk a little bit about um, what that means for our school and how our score is calculated. And this presentation was prepared by Forward Arkansas. Um, so I just updated it with our information, but this is the same information related to every school across the state. So ESSA stands for Every Student Succeeds Act. Uh, it is a federal law that establishes the requirements for states to receive federal funding. That federal funding is a small percentage of the total revenue that uh, is used to operate schools. It accounts for about 10% or a little less than $600 million in the state of Arkansas, but it's still an important resource. Uh, we use those funds to make sure that our low um, income students have the same opportunities that our upper income students have and that every student has the opportunity um, to be successful in reading and math. ESSA federal requirements guide how Arkansas designed our state level ESSA plan, which in turn guides how our school is evaluated and measured throughout the year. The Arkansas ESSA plan addresses academic standards, student, the student assessment system, effective teachers and school accountability. It outlines what the performance expect expectations are for all students in Arkansas, including uh, subgroups like English language learners, low-income students, and racial and ethnic uh, minority groups. It establishes an SS school index to differentiate support to schools, and that index informs the state accountability measures, including uh, where we are in levels of support, what our school rewards are, and what grade we're given as a school. Some of the changes under the Arkansas ESSA plan include uh, looking at an achievement gap. So all students are included in the overall ESSA school index and success is measured by individual subgroups. So we're not just looking at growth of all students, we're also looking at growth of those individual subgroups. Um, it looks specifically at English language learners and if they're increasing in their ability um, to be proficient in reading, writing, and speaking English. Um, those are things that we have not looked at in the past. It also includes science testing. Um, prior to ESSA, school accountability was based on math and English um, proficiency only. And now we also look at science performance and growth. Uh, and it also focuses on teachers. So states have to publicly report any inequity in access to effective teachers. For example, um, the data in Arkansas shows that there are equity gaps in students' access to experienced teachers who are licensed to teach in the field that they're teaching, um, and that the higher rate of ineffective teachers occurs in high poverty and high minority schools, and they also have a greater rate of attrition and a less stable workforce. Uh, so those are things that the state is, is looking at and working on overall. So let's look specifically at the ESSA school index. The ESSA school index is used to identify additional state support um, so there's comprehensive support and improvement for the lowest 5% of schools and schools that fail to graduate at least a third of their students. Um, targeted improvement and support is for schools with chronically underperforming subgroups. And then there's additional targeted improvement and support with schools that have subgroup indices in the lowest 5%. Um, so the, that's the, the layers of support that the state offers for schools um, that are not serving their students as well as the state would like to see them be served. The Arkansas accountability system was restructured in 2017 by Act 930 of 2017. Uh, it provides school districts with one of five collaboratively decided levels of support. Um, and it just, the levels describe the support that ADE should provide to the district. Um, so in level one, all districts are initially in level one uh, that's just general support, so questions answered, um, information available from experts. Level two is collaborative, where experts from the state are coming in to work with leadership um, and look at what's happening in the schools and making better decisions to better support students and teachers. Level three is coordinated, so those experts are no longer collaborating with admin. They're coming in to tell admin what they're going to be doing in order to help um, direct uh, or to help improve outcomes for students. Level four is directed. Um, and in that case, admin is usually replaced by someone from the state uh, who's making those decisions. And level five is intensive. 
in an intensive situation, the state, the Arkansas Department of Education actually steps in and takes over and runs the district um, in the way that it sees best to serve all students. Annual testing is the primary factor that determines the Arkansas SS School Index. Uh, these scores come from ACT Aspire, which is given to third through 10th grade, the dynamic learning map, which is an alternative assessment given to our special education students who are cognitively not able to access the ACT Aspire, and the English language Profici proficiency assessment, or the ELPA 21. Um, that is given to our ESL um, and ELL learners. A combined score of four types of information um, helps to add to the ESSA index. The federal requirement um, it includes weighted achievement. So those are based on annual standardized tests, uh, specifically ACT Aspire, where student scores fall into one of four levels in need of support, close, ready, or exceeding the expectation. Um, expected value, um, expected growth of the student. Um, so ACT Aspire is able to predict how much growth a student should achieve in a year. And that's part of the ESSA school index. Graduation rate points, so how many students graduate in four or five years from their entry to ninth grade. And then the state has added uh, another specific set of indices, the school quality and student success uh, measures, which is a combination of several measures um, that stakeholders, including parents, students, teachers, and administrators across Arkansas chose. The weight of the indicator makes the measure more or less important relative to the other. Uh, so two measures related to testing scores have a, a, the greatest impact in determining school index. Um, so the weighted achievement, this is achievement scores on tests for elementary and middle schools makes up 35% and for high schools makes up 35% of your overall score. And then your growth score or how much growth was expected versus how, what you hit um, is 50% for elementary schools and 35% for high schools. Uh, the last 15% are those school quality and student success for elementary, 15% for high school as well, and then the last 15 of high school is based solely on graduation rates. So ESSA allows us to look at a more complete picture of student learning rather than looking at student performance in a single point in time. Um, we're looking at student growth between two or more points in time. Uh, so we're not just saying, okay, on this day, this is what you, you did, um, but this is how you've grown over the year. It, uh, it, achievement relates to student background, it compares student performance to a standard, and it's critical to student post-secondary opportunities. Uh, so ACT scores, SAT scores, that are, those are critical to what you do beyond. But your ability to grow is not necessarily related to your student background. That's related to the quality of instruction that you're receiving. Uh, it allows students to compare their performance to their own prior performance and is critical to ensuring their, their future academic success. Uh, so we always want our students to be focused on a growth mindset. I don't know that yet, but I will learn how to do it in the future. And those two things combined give us a more complete picture of student learning. All right, let's talk about the growth measure more specifically. Uh, so each year, a certain amount of growth in reading, math, and science is expected, and points per student are awarded based on whether the student gains more or less than, ex than what was expected. Uh, there are also points for growth of English language learners on the ELPA 21. The growth measure gives the best picture of how well the school is doing. So growth shows a school's success in improving the success of all students, whether those students are far, far ahead or behind at the start of a school year. Overall achievement um, tends to be lower in high poverty schools. Academic growth, on the other hand, reflects how much improvement students make from year to year, which is what school personnel can impact directly through high quality instruction. So how does that growth measure work? Um, each year, we look at the prior year's um, scores on the ACT Aspire or on, um, in our case, we also look at Renaissance scores in the ACT, uh, and we can predict um, where they should grow in a single year's time. So given good instruction, where should that student grow? If a student hits that or is, makes more growth than expected, um, the school gets a positive score. If they don't hit that expected growth score or 
actually lose ground and uh, do worse than they did pre previously, um, then the school's score is impacted negatively. So looking at an analogy, at the beginning of the year, we expect child A to grow an inch and we expect child B to grow two inches. At the end of the year, we find that child A actually grow, grew two inches and child B grew only an inch. Even though child A is still shorter than child B, child A grew more than expected. Um, so that would be a positive growth score uh, for the school, uh, whereas child B, even though they're still ahead of child A, um, would be a negative growth score for the school. So it doesn't, the growth score doesn't take into account what the actual score was, whether they're proficient or exceeding or any of those things. It actually looks at how much each individual student grew. So even if that student is behind, but they grew um, in their ability and they hit their growth score, the school is still um, receiving a positive score for that growth. Some research has suggested that the weight for growth should be further increased. This would improve the SS school index of schools that are highly successful in increasing achievement for students who are, who are behind. Um, generally, schools with many students who are behind have high poverty levels in their communities. And schools with low performing students who increase achievement but are still not at grade level would still receive low scores for that low achievement, but they would also be recognized for the better scores um, with their growth. So we're, the uh, Office of Educational Policy actually looked specifically at several high poverty schools um, and looked at what their achievement is. And you can see that their achievement is pretty low. Um, most of them below 60%. Uh, but if you look at their growth, all of them are growing at higher than 80%. Uh, so even though those students are coming in missing a lot of skills and basic foundation, those teachers are doing amazing things in order to help their students grow. Let's look at the school quality and student success measures. Part one of SQSS looks at uh, chronic absences. Uh, so schools are awarded one point for each student who is absent less than 5% of the days enrolled. In Arkansas, the school year is mandated to be 178 days. So that means that each student is uh, absent for nine or fewer days. So for every student that we have that's absent for nine or fewer days, we gain a point. They also look at reading achievement, science achievement, and science growth. Uh, these measures are included in the SQSS, um, at which reinforces their importance for school quality. Schools receive points for students who are at or above grade level in reading and science and who meet their expected growth in science. Part two looks at the ACT composite and ACT benchmark readiness. This is based on each 12th grade student's best scores on the four part, part um, ACT college admission test. So they look at super scores. Schools receive points for students with composite scores of at least 19 and for higher benchmark readiness scores, which are indicators for success in college. Schools receive points when students meet ACT readiness benchmarks for reading, math, and or science. It also looks at on-time credits, um, so measuring progress students make from year to year and collecting the credits that they need for graduation. And finally, looks at their high school GPA. Uh, so based on the letter grades that each 12th grade student receives in their courses, for example, a student with all A's would have a 4.0 or higher, um, and schools receive one point for each student that has at least a 2.8 high school GPA, which is equivalent to a high C letter grade. Part three looks at uh, the number of students that are taking advanced placement, international baccalaureate, and concurrent credit courses. And that's, so that's based on the number of 12th grade students who have taken these courses. Um, specifically, Arkansas embarks on um, an initiative to increase the offering of courses in computer science, and schools receive credit for each 12th grade student taking a computer science course. And then finally, students receive credit for working in community organizations as part of a course designed to support community, community learning. Um, let's look at school rewards and school letter grades. So how are those calculated? Arkansas uses the Arkansas SS School Index to determine school rewards and letter grades. The school rewards and the A through F letter grade system are part of a state, uh, are the result of state legislation. And school rewards are additional funding based on a school's overall achievement, as well as student growth or improvement in achievement. Uh, so if you are in the top 5% um, for performance, the state adds an additional $99.18 per student. If you're in the top 6 to 10% in performance, they add 
$49.58 uh, $49 per student. If you're in the top 5% for growth, you're awarded an additional $99.18 per student. And if you're in the top 6 to 10% growth, you're awarded an additional $49.58 per student. Um, so this is a way to financially incentivize schools um, to work hard to be in those categories and help their students grow. Here's the distribution of letter grades from 2007 and 2018. As you can see, it's a pretty standard bell curve. Uh, the majority of schools in Arkansas are receiving a C, um, and then there are slightly more A's and B's than there are D's and F's in our state. The school report card can be viewed on myschoolinfo.com. My school this is a sample um, school report card. It gives you information about the enrollment, the average class size, the average years of teaching experience, the per pupil spending, um, school choice transfers, and then what the school's letter grade is and what their actual SS score is. These are our statistics from 2018, 2019, which is the most recent available school year. Uh, we don't have statistics from 2019, 2020 because there were no tests given in the spring of 2020 due to the pandemic. Um, and so we're, they're currently looking at how they can rework um, the formula. Our enrollment in 2018, 2019 was 1,025 students. The average class size was 13. Our average year's teaching experience was four, which is on the low side. We spent $8,408 per student. The state average is $10,117. Um, I do not know what our legal transfers were due to school choice. The high school has an A with a, a score of 78.06 and the elementary school has a B with a score of 73.69. So how can you help as a parent or a community member? So as a parent or guardian, what can you do to improve your student's school experience, your school's SS school index, or your school's letter grade? The first thing is attendance, which is key to student success. Uh, so each time your student is absent less than 5% of the days enrolled, your child receives more instruction, they build better relationships with other students and with their teachers, and they perform better academically. And the school receives points toward their ESSA index. So if possible, we ask that you schedule doctor's appointments before or after school and schedule family vacations during planned school breaks. Make sure you keep reading. Read to your child and have your child read to you. Even in the high school level, this can be valuable time. Set aside time to discuss what your child is reading in school and ask questions like, why did the character feel that way? Or what would happen if? Turn everyday experiences into reading opportunities. Ask your child to read labels in the grocery store, to read street signs while you're driving, or, to, or turn on the closed captions when you're watching TV and have them read along. Um, those are sometimes incredibly amusing because they don't necessarily match what's actually being said. Make sure that you stay connected during high school. So schedule a meeting at least twice a year with your child's counselor and ask these questions. How many absences and tardies does my child have? What's my child's current and overall GPA? The closer to a 3.0, the better. That's me, the higher the chance you have of receiving scholarships and assistance in college. How many credits does my child have? Arkansas requires 22 credits to graduate. Our school requires 24. Each student needs to have more than five and a half credits after ninth grade, 11 after 10th, and 16 and a half after 11th grade to be considered on track and on time for graduation. And then encourage your child to take challenging courses. Each child should take at least one advanced placement class or concurrent class during their high school experience. As a local community organization or business, how can you support our local schools? You can help us by developing a community service learning project with your local district. Uh, we know that community service and student learning means that the student, school, and community all improve. Community service learning involves volunteering or serving in a worthwhile capacity in the community while making a conscious effort to reflect through some thoughtfully designed method on what is learned from the service experience. We're offering a community service and leadership class this year. It's actually one that I teach and we're looking for ways that we can get out into the community and improve it, and students will reflect on their experiences by writing an essay at the end of the year. Next steps for community service learning. So talk to us about the plan that we've developed for community service learning. Uh, we do have one, so we're happy to modify it if you have an opportunity. 
work with your local school board and state board to obtain site approval as a partner organization to certify community service. So if you're part of a nonprofit or you have a community service opportunity, please contact us so we can get you approved and students can come out to work at your site while earning credit. Um, implement program, or help us implement the program, certify hours and award students credit for their community service hours. If you need more information, you can go to myschoolinfo.arkansas.gov. You can look up any school district um, and see all of their information, including the information about test scores and subpopulations. Uh, if you want uh, video assistance on how to access the ESSA school information, there are YouTube um, videos linked here on how to access ESSA and also how to view the school report card in My School Info. If you'd like to know more about growth scores and how they're calculated and why they're important, this is information from the Data Quality Campaign and from the Office for Educational Policy. And you're welcome to read both of those um, documents to learn more about why those are important. Thank you for joining us this evening. If you have any questions about ESSA or you would like more information about how to access My School Info, you are welcome to contact me directly by email. Um, my email is hwright at artsk12.org. Have a wonderful evening.